Reliability and validity are the two important characteristics of high quality research. However, reliability and validity and it, the quality of research more generally can be understood in a various different ways, particularly if you do qualitative research. This is how quality, uh, quality of research is often presented. So this is a very quantitative way of understanding high quality research. Reliability refers to if you do the study again, would you get the same result? Basically about measurements, because everything else is assumed to be deterministic and quantitative research. Measurement validity, some type of contract validity, refers to whether your variables measure what you're supposed to measure. Statistical conclusion validity, do you do your statistical uh, inferences correctly? Internal validity, are your causal claims correct and supported? And external validity refers to whether the study generalizes. So this is a very quantitative way of viewing validity and reliability. And it's not, the, but it's not the only way that you can view the quality of research. For example, our book says that we have reliability, replicability and validity here. And the idea here is that replicability is added because you should never trust a single study. So a study is only trustworthy if the results repli are replicated across different studies. So it might be that we uh, make a small error in our study or we just get a lucky and get a, a finding and then the finding is published because it's surprising and we have data to support it. Then others don't replicate it. Then if it doesn't replicate, then it's not valid research. Uh, this term uh, replicability is related to two, two different concepts. We have uh, re reproducibility and replicability, and these are often confused. Reproducibility means is the study documented well enough that we could in principle run it again. So if we would give the same data to somebody else, would they be able to read our study and come up with the same result? Surprisingly, many studies don't document their procedures well enough that you could actually reproduce it. And this is a big discussion point in management research currently. Then there is a replicability, which refers to whether follow-up studies support the original study. And this replicability is now a hot topic in business research and particularly in psychology. There is this term called replication crisis, and this refers to the phenomenon that in psychology research about in, in early 2000s, someone realized that if we replicate many of these seminal psychological studies, the follow-up studies actually don't support the original result. So the studies that uh, the theories are based on don't always replicate. So they might be just chance findings, some errors, somebody getting lucky. There's a really great video on YouTube called Is Most Published Research Wrong? that explains this problem. Then uh, reproducibility is something that is also discussed a lot in management research. And uh, there, are, there are now special issues about replication and reproducibility. There is now a new journal that publishes replication studies. So replicability is becoming more and more common. And this is perhaps the reason why the textbook author chose to include replicability there among the the important quality criteria. Then if we look at validity, then validity also can be understood in different ways. And our book explains validity in, in four different ways. So we have measurement validity, whether the variables actually measure what they're supposed to measure, internal validity, causality, and uh, sometimes statistical conclusion validity is included in internal validity because unless your stats are correct, then your claim cannot be correct. So this statistical conclusion validity is understood to be a part of internal validity. The next internal validity is generalizability. But the, here we have this concept of ecological validity, which the most commonly used uh, categorization of validity that I had on the first slide does not include. So what is ecological validity? Ecological validity is uh, originates from experimental research. And the idea from, from those experiments is that the experiments should mimic real world scenarios as well as possible instead of being some kind of artificial scenarios that are run in labs. So that is the origin of the concept of ecological validity. Ecological validity 
is often used as a synonym for external validity. So external validity is used in, in the context of lab studies, whether the study generalizes from the lab in, that's internally valid to externally outside the lab. And um, external val uh, ecological validity is thought to be a part of external validity or the same thing. Uh, this is really used in management research. I have about 10,000 articles stored in my, on my computer, various kinds of business research, and I couldn't find a single hit on, of ecological validity in those, except for one book that used it for a different purpose. So this is not very commonly used. Imp important parts are external validity, internal validity, and measurement validity. Those are pretty much agreed on by everybody that they are important. When we go to qualitative research, Qualitative researchers, for good reason, think that qualitative research should have different validity standards. And uh, one very common is from Lincoln and Guba, and they present this uh, credibility, transferability, dependability, and confirmability, which are uh, similar to the four kinds of validity that I explained on the, in the beginning of this talk. But we can go even further. If you really want to understand um, validity and quality of research in qualitative research, there's actually quite a lot more to it than, than thinking about what are the parallels between qualitative and quantitative research. For example, if you do an interpretive research, then um, whether you are, your study presents the, inf uh, the experience of the informant in authentic way, would not be captured by these, because these are more about whether the propositions are correct. But if your study doesn't produce propositions or doesn't test hypotheses, but it tries to explain how a person understands the situation, then does your explanation really capture in an authentic way the person's uh, on, uh, the situation? And do you really capture the un or understand how the person views the situation. So here we try to explain and here we try to understand and we need a different kind of quality criteria. If you're doing a critical study where your goal is not to explain or understand the current situation but perhaps change the current situation, then um, you might add that the study must be consequential. So a study that doesn't have any consequences study something that doesn't make a difference would not be a valid study from the critical theory perspective. To summarize, uh, when we talk about reliability and validity, it's useful to understand this fairly uh, statistical quantitative research oriented uh, way of, of looking at validity first, because most validity frameworks built on this framework, which I think comes from Shady's uh, or Campbell and Cook book, from the 60s. And even if they don't build directly on this, uh, explanations of validity typically explain how the new idea of validity relates to this uh, idea of, of three or four times of validity. Uh, statistical conclusion validity is typically not included in qualitative studies for obvious reasons.